Come in, citizen. Martin McFly, age 18, resident of Sector L, Father George, Mother Lorraine, president of the Junior Brown Brigade, recipient of a full-ride scholarship to Strickland College, winner of the Courthouse Challenge to Corporate Award, zero demerits until this morning. The obvious question, Mr. McFly, is... What happened to you? Jesus Christ, Doc, what happened to you? Doc, interesting. You regard me as a doctor, indicating awareness that you're suffering from some variety of mental disorder. That's a hopeful sign, Martin. Of course, I'm not actually a doctor, but I do have the tools to turn you around and put you back on the road to societal normalization. Shall we begin with a few questions to establish a baseline? Whatever. Let's get through this nonsense so I can set you straight. You'll set me straight? Explain. This whole crazy world you've created, it's totally mental. There's all these stupid rules and everybody's acting all weird. My dad's turned into this creepy snoop. Mom's completely pathetic. And Jennifer's kind of scary. And Biff! It's like he's a zombie or something. And it's all basically your fault. So you believe this interview is really more about me than you? Yes! You went to all this trouble just to deliver a message to me in person? Yes! A cry for help, as it were. Yes! No way. Tell me, Mark. Is your mother on the sauce again? Not where I come from. When I left here, both my parents were happy and well-adjusted. Okay, they didn't start out that way, but that's where your time machine comes in. Time machine? Yeah, Doc, listen to me. You don't remember it, but you built a time machine out of a DeLorean. Why? Well, just for the hell of it, I, I guess. Plus, the steel frame of the DeLorean dispersal, I don't know. It was important for some reason. Fascinating. Yes! Yes, it is fascinating. It's it's amazing. It's incredible. But you don't know it because you've never invented it. You're not the real Doc Brown. You gotta believe me. And this is because? Everything got screwed up when I went back in time to 1931. Sounds like this time machine is a very impractical and dangerous invention. No! I... I mean, yes. What I mean is it's messed up a lot of things, but first, it made a lot of things better. Uh, like my mom and my dad. It was only thanks to your time machine that they ever became successful and happy. So they're happy. But they're not, because you summoned me back in time and somehow your timeline got messed up and everybody else is along with it. I see. No, you don't. Think. Think back. Don't you remember me? We knew each other when you were 18. I'm Michael Corleone. Incredible. This case is more serious than I'd imagined. The boy has fabricated an alternate reality. No, this is the alternate reality. My reality is the real reality. Calm down, Martin. I'm not blaming you for anything. The failure is ours, not yours. Obviously, there was a drastic flaw in your social conditioning. God, you don't understand. No, I don't understand yet, but I want to. I want to get at the root of your problem. Keep talking. Ah. Uh... Take your time. Look around the room. Perhaps something here will stimulate your ma your memory. You still got the movie ticket. Indeed I do. A memento of my first date with Edna. I took her to see The Virtuous Husband. And you never saw Frankenstein. You were supposed to go see Frankenstein that night. It was going to give you the inspiration you needed to pull off your big demonstration at the Hill Valley Expo. Inspired by Frankenstein? How whimsical. Not to mention historically inaccurate. My darling wife was all the scientific muse I've ever needed. 
from my successful demonstration at the 31 Expo all the way up to my cutting edge Citizen Plus program. Successful? It was supposed to be a failure. Okay, take a look at this picture of Einstein here. The dog? Harboring dangerous animals is a municipal offense. Yeah, yeah, they told me, but you harbored this very same animal once, a long time ago. Remember the test run of your rocket car? Einstein landed on the roof of the courthouse. I do, I, I do recall something of a sort, but naturally it couldn't have been the same dog. There wasn't anything natural about it. Einstein's a time traveler too, thanks to your invention. Uh... An impressively detailed illusion. Keep talking. So that's what Judge Brown looked like. I never actually saw him. Of course not. He died before you were born. He was my biggest supporter. After my wife, of course. That's a switch. Last time I saw your younger self, you and your dad had just had a big falling out over your decision to become an inventor instead of a lawyer. Isn't that right? I... uh... Bizarre fantasy life. Go on. Proceed. Hey, this is your fish tank. Yes, that is my fish tank. It looks much better without all the bacteria. What? Edna just had it clean. Yeah, but in 1931 it was full of bacteria that we used to make rocket fuel. Remember? Stop trying to confuse me! My whole life has been dedicated to the practical use of technology to shape a more efficient, orderly society. Ask anyone. It's a fact. You can look it up. But you know better, right? Emmett? I... I... Wrong. Do you see this picture? I keep it close by me to remind me of the moment when my life's course became clear. August 25th, 1931. The day I single-handedly captured Kitanin, the scourge of Hill Valley. Single-handedly? And not incidentally the day I caught the eye of Edna Strickland, my scientific muse and the love of my life. Take a look. What you see there is a young man who understands his destiny. That's not what I see. What do you see? Be? I think it is. What? It's me, and you, the other you. It is me, and you. But how? Michael? It's impossible. No, it's science. Your science, Doc. In this other world, the one you say you come from, am I... Am I happy there? Very happy. You've got two great sons. Sons? Yes, and a fantastic wife. Not Edna? Not even remotely. And your invention. Jeez, Doc, you can go anywhere you want to. Anywhere in time. You're the luckiest guy in the universe. And what about Hill Valley? Hill Valley? You know it's got problems. A little bit of urban decay here, a little bit of crime there. It's a normal city. People are happy, mostly. And even when they're miserable, they're not miserable like they are in your Hill Valley. Stop! There are no miserable people in my Hill Valley. Give me a break. You don't really believe- My citizens lead lives of order and peace. Nobody worries. Nobody complains. Only because they were afraid to. Jeez, open your eyes, will you? You and Edna have got them all terrorized. That's Mrs. Round to you, Sonny. Doc. Kindly address me as your honor. We worked for over 50 years, my wife and I, every waking moment devoted to ridding Hill Valley of vice and disorder. And you dare to claim that our citizens are unhappy? Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I've seen it. They're just too afraid to speak up. Afraid? Afraid of what? 
afraid of the consequences of their actions, Doc. You run this place like it's a police state. Nonsense. I can prove it. All right then, time travel boy. You do that. And until you do, I'm going to treat your wild story as just that. A story told by a madman. And I've determined that the best treatment is simply to let the insanity run its course. So, is the interview over? Should I leave? Please do. I'm very busy. I've got a city to run. Fine, but I'll be back with proof. <laughs>